Time loops are some of my favorite mechanics in storytelling. From movies like Groundhog's Day, Edge of Tomorrow, or Triangle, to books like the first two-thirds of Evelyn Hardcastle, that one really good episode of Doctor Who, or even certain other stories that this channel is more prone to covering. <laughs> There's a certain novelty to the puzzle solving inherent in a story about a looping period of time that's difficult to find anywhere else. And since there's only so many stories that tackle this topic, you might be hard pressed for more content if you fall for the genre like I did. In video games especially, time loops haven't received too much in the way of attention. I mean, yeah, there was that one Zelda game, but the list is pretty small. There is, I think, a very good reason for this. There are certain conventions and game mechanics that make looping time periods a little less viable within the medium, but we're gonna stick a pin in that conversation for right now. That is, of course, not to say that video games can't use time loops in an effective way, and with the recent success of The Outer Wilds, I think games are finding their footing in using time loops in their stories. Which brings us, uh, thematically to 12 minutes. I've been following the development of this game for a long time now, mostly because of its publisher, Annapurna Interactive. They've published a handful of games that I very much enjoyed. Add in the time loop mechanic and I was right on board. Repetition isn't a hard sell in video games. Fundamentally, repetition is at the core of lots of game mechanics. You go forward, you jump on the Goomba, you reach the castle and go to the next level to do it again. The issue of repetition isn't so much a problem with game mechanics as much as it is a problem with story design. Time loops in particular are tricky because of how repetition is the gimmick of the whole story, but well-executed stories can pull this off in an engaging way. Take for example the 2007 film Time Crimes. It follows a man who is lured into a forest and is attacked and chased by a man whose face is wrapped in bandages. The man escapes to a nearby silo and is made to hide out in a strange machine full of liquid. I know it sounds weird when I'm saying it like this, but the film is good, trust me. Anyway, the man climbs out of the machine a few seconds later, only to find out that he's gone a few hours back in time. From this point on, there are several times within the film where you see the same scenes from earlier in the story, but from a slightly different perspective, which makes engaging with the film a more worthwhile endeavor. Questions you may have when watching a scene for the first time, like what was that doing there or who was that person, can be answered when watching the same scene play out but with new information. So what's the deal with 12 minutes? When you first boot up the game, you seem to be an average man just coming home from work. You greet your wife. She's made dinner. By all means, it's a typical night in. Five minutes later, a man dressed like Agent 47 and voiced by Willem Dafoe breaks into your apartment, claiming to be with the police. He assaults you, coerces the location of a prized stopwatch from your wife, and then he kills her. This is a strong opening, and it offers a lot of questions. Wh who is this man? Did he have the right house? If he did, who was your wife really? Was it a hit job? What's with the watch? Lots of things the player wants to know, so we go back in time. As you may have guessed, the story of 12 minutes takes place over the course of, well, 12 minutes. The loop restarts in three different ways. Anytime your character dies, anytime he tries to leave the room, or if 12 minutes elapse, then the loop restarts on its own. Wait, but, oh, God damn it! God damn it! This is reminiscent of time loops like Groundhog Day or Happy Death Day, wherein the loop restarts at the end of the day if the trapped character dies, but the limit of 12 minutes adds a layer of stress. The player has very little time to gather information that could lead to whatever solution permanently ends the loop. The game plays with this in some fun ways. For example, the player will inevitably try to rush performing whatever tasks will help them gain information or return to a place that they were in an earlier loop, meaning that you'll probably start ignoring your wife's romantic gestures out of haste, so she understandably starts saying things like, Not now. Okay. Rude. There are these little moments of non-diegetic humor sprinkled throughout the game, in reference to everyone's least favorite thing about movies when the hitman first ties down your wife and interrogates her about the watch, she'll refuse to tell him about it, and the hitman decides that torturing you will make her talk. However, by intention or not, the hitman strangles you to death, resetting the loop. But before it all ends, your wife says, Please, please, the watch is in her. Oh, damn it. Cleverly enough, this little joke also serves as a means of progression. You can surmise that when the hitman comes again, he'll probably just kill you before she says what the watch is, just like the first time. So you try to find out how to create a situation wherein your wife finishes her sentence, and one viable path towards that is changing one variable. What if you're not there? 
So you jump in the closet before your wife notices you've entered the apartment. Wait there long enough and eventually the hitman will come through, and your wife will confess that the watch is hidden in a vent beneath the bathroom's medicine cabinet. Now you've got a clue. So you restart the loop, make a beeline for the watch, only to learn that your wife will leave the apartment in anger if you try to take the watch without closing the bathroom door. So, one more time. You can follow this path for a little while, and you'll get some extra dialogue when talking to your wife if you bring up the watch, but you won't be escaping the loop anytime soon with just this. Oh, and for a nice little touch, you can take the phone in your wife's purse and use it to call the police and tell them about the hitman if you want, but this won't save you either. Why? Well, because the loop resets after 12 minutes, and the cops, well... They should be there in 15 minutes. 15 min- we can't wait 15 minutes! So the hunt for clues starts again. Though it might be a little easier to look around if you didn't have to worry about closing doors so your wife can't see what you're doing. Luckily, there are some sleeping pills in the medicine cabinet, so... Water? Oh, yeah, thanks. I was about to grab some. This isn't an option, by the way. In order to progress the game, you have to drug your wife like this. A lot. This is one thing about 12 minutes that may annoy some players who didn't realize it until it was too late. You don't have a lot of different ways to go about solving the puzzle of the time loop, especially as the story progresses. There's a process that you start falling into, because events that occur later in the plot require specific setups to be done in the early game. From one perspective, I can see where this idea made sense. You don't want a player accidentally solving the whole game early by clicking on some late game object that you had tried to hide, so naturally you'd want some kind of control over the progression. However, this linearity in puzzle solving adds to a problem with tedium that the game will start struggling with as the story progresses, but we'll get into that a bit later. Back to the game for now. Your wife is knocked out, time to start looking around. You can go get the watch if you want. There's a picture on the fridge, that's cute. And if you dig through your drawers, you'll find a present that your wife was hiding from you. Open the present up and you'll find baby clothes with the name Dahlia on them. Is this going to be relevant? Probably. Though, this isn't the only way to find these clothes. If you start a loop and try to enjoy a romantic evening with your wife, eventually she'll surprise you with the clothes during dinner, revealing that she's pregnant. We're having a baby! <laughs> what? Wow! You'll also learn that Dahlia is the name she plans to give your child if it turns out to be a girl. She picked the name because... I wanted to name her for your mother. Oh, that's sweet. Anyway, back to the drug timeline. Your wife is passed out on the bed and you're not making much headway with the clues and... Shit, oh, forgot about oh, the hitman. Oh, Gotta hide. Uh, oh, god damn it. Come on, I know you're home. Open the door. What the? No, oh, look at that. If the hitman sees your wife knocked out in the bedroom, he'll walk in and turn on the lights to get a better look. Realizing that his visit was now completely in vain, he leaves. Just kidding, he checks the closet and finds you. What the? But hey, that light switch is actually a big hint. Enterprising players may have tried turning on the lights in the bedroom themselves at one point, only to learn that the switch is faulty and will shock you if you use it. If you keep flicking the switch, you'll learn quite painfully that the switch can be used exactly twice before blowing the power. When it does, it will shock the person who touched it badly enough that they'll pass out. Uh, unless you trick your wife into doing it, then she just dies. Oh shit! Oh, okay. Hey, hey, you're okay, right? Just, just a shock. God damn it! I knew I should have gotten that fixed. Well, I guess uh, she won't be needing these. Why a book in meditations? But we can use this on the hitman, can't we? All right, new route. Start a loop. Grab the mugs. Drug your wife. Hit the switch. Hide in the closet and wait for the hitman to come. He'll break into the apartment. See your wife in the bedroom. Turn the lights on. What the? Time to get a better look at this guy. Go into the bedroom and you'll find a gun, small knife, two pairs of handcuffs, and a phone on the hitman's body. You can use the handcuffs to tie up the hitman, and then when he wakes up, you can start asking questions. But of course, he's not giving answers. Guess it's time to start stabbing. Whoa, hey, what are you doing with that thing? Jesus Christ. Stop! I'm, I'm not fighting you. What do you want? 
Now he'll talk to you. Again, this is not optional. To progress the plot, you have to drug your wife and torture a stranger. This is just how things are. Also, can I take a moment to point out how terrible your character is at using weapons? There are three main weapons you can pick up during the game. There's the knife and gun you can take off the hitman, and then there's the kitchen knife that you can find on the counter. If you try to use the knife when attacking the hitman, it will literally never work, and he will just keep kicking the shit out of you over and over and over again. And even if you mess up a run and try to shoot yourself in the head with the hitman's gun, your character even fucks that up. Right. There's probably something to be said about how graphic and drawn out this animation is, but I'm not going to touch on that here. Moving on. You can get one thing out of this encounter without torturing the man. If you go through the messages on his phone, you'll find a contact, Bumblebee, his daughter. Scroll down through the messages and you'll learn that she has cancer. Interesting info, not sure how it's relevant yet, but you know, I'll keep that in the back pocket. You can also learn Bumblebee's number, you know, might as well, might be useful. Anyway, back to torturing this hitman. Don't! I'm gonna hurt you again if you make me. Unless you've been taking too long, in which case... <laughs> what? Wait, but... Oh, God damn it! Now you gotta do all this shit again. Okay, so your wife is knocked out and the hitman is tied up on the floor. Back to business. After you stab or shoot the hitman, he will tell you the reason he's attacking you. Eight years ago, your wife murdered her own father on New Year's Eve. The hitman was close to her father and is chasing revenge. He taught me everything I know. He was good to me. But no one else was, and that monster murdered him. You can ask the hitman for more information, and he'll elaborate somewhat on his friendship with her father until- Fuck! Okay, I really don't want to have to go through that whole process again. We have some more information now, let's try asking our wife about this whole murder thing. I wanted to tell you, I just, I'm sorry, I know it doesn't matter, but I am, I just, I gotta go. Wait. I fucking knew it. Can't get to that door. <sighs> and we're back. Oh, she left. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. Let's see if Bumblebee's got something for us. Hello? Hey, I got your number from your dad. What? Your dad says that my wife killed her father. He's coming to hurt her. This isn't funny, you creep. Could you just talk to him, please? He will listen to you. Um, maybe she shouldn't have been a murderer? I mean that- Lose my number. Alright, maybe not. But actually, if you insist that your wife is innocent, you can convince Bumblebee to call her father, and try to convince him to listen to you. Hey, Bumblebee. What's up? What? What do you... Honey, I think you got prank called. This doesn't seem significant, but trust me, it is. You think you're funny? Calling my family? <laughs> Look, uh, we need to talk about something. What is a time loop... Really? There are two kinds of temporal loops that usually take place in fiction. Video games primarily only use one of these, and there's a good reason why. The first kind of loop is called a causal loop. For this, I'm going to go back to talking about time crimes for a second. Causal loops are self-contained, so they let the writer play around with dropping hints in the early story that pay off later. I was talking earlier about how scenes in this movie only get better as the plot progresses as you get to watch the same scenes play out from different perspectives. In truth, these perspectives are building on each other. For example, in spoilers for like the first 30-ish minutes of this film, the bandaged man chasing the main character is the main character himself, just later in the loop. When he gets into the machine that sends him back in time, he has to avoid running into his past self, and eventually has to make situations play out exactly as they did when he first experienced them. In fact, the bandage he has wrapped around his face is the exact one he used to tie up his wound when he got stabbed with some scissors. You know, 
by himself. Unlike time loops wherein the main character is trying to escape the loop, characters in a causal loop are trying to ensure that the loop plays out as it's destined to. Or they may try to fight against the loop, only to realize that the things they are doing to avoid creating the same scenarios they experienced are exactly what caused you know said scenarios. You done all this already? That's me? I don't want to talk about time travel shit. Because if we start talking about it, then we're going to be here all day talking about it, making diagrams with straws. It doesn't matter. When I hurt myself, it changes your body. This is what I do now, change your memory. It doesn't matter! The second kind of loop is the one primarily used in gaming, what I'll call an iterative loop. In this kind of loop, there is a puzzle to be solved, and the person being made to solve it can carry certain things over from one loop to the other. Commonly, especially in movies like Groundhog's Day or Happy Death Day, the only thing that carries over is information. The protagonist is aware of the loop and is able to try different things within said loop to see where they might be able to uncover some hints. Video games typically fall into the camp of using iterative loops. Sometimes, like in 12 minutes, the only carryover is information, just like in movies. Elsewhere, other items might carry over from one loop into the next. For this, I'm going to compare 12 minutes to another game that uses time loops, the 2017 game The Sexy Brutal. If you look past the misleadingly bad title, you'll find a fun and stylized puzzle game. It takes place over the course of 12 hours during a ritzy, masquerade-style party being held in an elaborate mansion. During the party, however, the various guests are hunted and killed by the mansion staff for reasons unknown. You play the role of supernatural detective. You move through the mansion like a ghost, using a magical stopwatch to turn back time when the clock strikes midnight. Your mission is to find a way to save the party guests and, along the way, uncover the larger plot that has encircled this mansion. You can pick up items during loops, and while these usually vanish whenever you reset time, there is one game mechanic that carries over across loops. Masks. Every time you save a party goer, they give you a mask, which can bestow special abilities that carry over between loops, unlocking parts of the mansion that were previously hidden. So how do we compare this to 12 minutes beyond the similarities in the time loop premise? Any time loop story has certain events that tend to draw the attention of the main character. Using their foreknowledge, they can manipulate things that are meant to occur at specific times. Sexy Brutal takes this as far as it can go. For example, in the game's tutorial, you are made to save Reginald Sixpence, a man who is shot to death in the cathedral at 3.45 p.m. You can save him by replacing the bullet in the rifle used to shoot him with a blank. However, after the tutorial, you are thrown into a part of the mansion that is blocked off from the cathedral, and you can't save Reginald in the loops to come until you make your way back. Until you do so, in every loop you can hear a gunshot at exactly 345. The exact nature of each partygoer's death makes it so that the player is capable of finding a solution to avoid each death via puzzle solving. Progression is straightforward. Once you save one guest, you move on to the next, and there's enough detail put into the mansion that you're rarely in a position where you're waiting for a specific event to happen. Tailing the paths of the staff and marking it on your map is a key game element, so you almost always have something new to do during a loop. Compare this to 12 minutes, which largely has one event. Five minutes in, a hitman arrives, tries to kill you and your wife. That's the whole loop. One event. If you start a loop and do nothing, all your wife will do is sit on the couch, waiting for dinner. The search for information becomes rote, as you are very limited in your means of gathering information. There isn't much to find by exploring the apartment, and the dialogue with your wife isn't exactly expansive. Eventually you get to the point in the plot where the first half of the loop is straight up an inconvenience. Think about that for a minute. A major feature in a game called 12 Minutes, wherein you are theoretically pressed for time in a search for clues, is jumping into the closet to skip the first five minutes of every loop. There's little to capitalize on gameplay-wise, and story-wise you're so limited that you'd have to throw out some ridiculous plot twist to maintain attention in the late game. But speaking of which... Yeah, so let's get into the endings of this game. Yeah, we're there already. That was quick, wasn't it? If you were paying attention while playing the game, then you might remember that when you grab the photo on the fridge, your character remarks... New Year's Eve. Eight... years ago. Wait... Wait, the cops said the old man was killed on New Year's. Oh. Yeah, your wife's innocent of the murder. Start a loop, talk to her about the murder, and then show her the photo. She'll realize her own innocence, and when the hitman comes, she'll show him the photo. She has to show it to him, by the way. If you don't give your wife the photo, then, uh... <laughs> oh, fuck you! Here, you have to take the picture. This game is so stupid. Anyway, if you give your wife the photo and she gives it to the hitman, then this happens. Look at this picture. 
Look at the date. New Year's Eve, the day my dad died. This coffee shop is around the corner. I couldn't have killed him. I can't be in two places at once. Congratulations. You faked a photograph. How do you fake a Polaroid? Listen, I know my father was important to you. I miss him too. But I... I always thought... You weren't there. I wasn't there. But then... I don't know. But it wasn't me. I'm sorry. I really am. My daughter, she... She's all I care about. She's dying. Cancer. And the insurance won't. I can't pay for the treatment. That watch, though, it could cover it all. God, if she knew I was doing this, thank you for not... If you told her what I was really here for, she'd never talk to me again. I'm going now. Wait just a second. Here, take the watch. You need it more than I do. She does. I'm pretty good at finding people, obviously. I'll find out who killed your father. Thank you. Actually, there's one thing that might help. What? When I found him, he lost a lot of blood. I tried to stop the bleeding, but... Anyway, he was saying something. What was he saying? Just the word monster. Over and over. I always wondered what it meant. It's my brother. Oh my god. You have a brother. My mom was right. She was right all along. When my father and my nanny were having their affair, there was a baby. A boy. That's him. I didn't know. I'm sorry. But I'll find him. For you and for him. Thank you. Wow. Wow. So what happens now? Now we can go find your brother and move forward. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Man, I really, really love you. Really, really. I really love you, you, you too. I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, I guess it makes sense we're not quite done yet. This is the point I was talking about earlier where the first half of the game is just worthless. That's now, because the hitman isn't the puzzle anymore. It's the question of who killed your wife's father. Instead, the hitman is just an inconvenience because he cannot physically help you find the killer at all. Furthermore, at this point, there aren't any more clues to be found in the apartment. So how do we solve the mystery? Well, you connect two dots. That's it. When the hitman learns of your wife's innocence, he'll say, I'll look for your brother. I'll start with the nanny, go from there. How much do you remember about her? Uh, it's been a long time. Do you remember her name? Uh, something flowery. Daphne, Daisy, something like that. I'll dig into it. I'll let you know when I know more. Hey, you know what's a flower? A dahlia. That's a flower. D dahlia. That's it. Her name was Dahlia. So you have to give the baby clothes from the drawer to the hitman to prove this is the case. Let me just say that again. You have to show some baby clothes to the hitman in order to progress the story. Anyway, everyone brain blasts at the same time and... She, she was my mother. Uh, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh. No. 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 Hey, that sounds kind of familiar. Yeah, that's the big twist. You killed your dad and married your sister. How, uh, Oedipal. So now what? Well, now the game, having completely given up on setting this story in one room, teleports you to the past, where the younger you is talking to your still-alive father. Look, I know this is a lot to drop on you, but I gotta know that we're on the same page concerning these feelings. So consider your answer to this question very carefully. What do you want with my daughter? During this flashback, you see how it all played out, and you witnessed your father's death. Just to really drive it home, you know? Oh. 
on the hole. And we're back to the apartment. What now? I mean, you could tell the truth to your wife, but you don't have to. Not just yet. Would you care to dance? You? Dance? Wow. Milady. This is nice, huh? I'll give the game one point here. It did actually prepare dialogue in case you did this before telling your wife the truth. No, 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 you, you dance with me? Then this? What sick fucking game are you playing? Wait. Fuck you. One point, game. One point. But then again, I think I'm going to have to take that point away. Why? Well, because shortly afterwards... Babe? You hear me? Get out of my apartment. Babe? I never want to see you again. Babe? 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 But to actually progress the game, you have to come clean to your wife slash sister, and promise to turn yourself in when the hitman arrives. Then, in a moment I could not make up, the game bends over and shoves its biggest flaw right in your face. Fine. We'll wait. <laughs> yeah, you wait. <laughs> Driving home the point that I was making earlier, the first five minutes of this loop are so worthless that this is what the writers of the game resort to. Well, if we're waiting, might as well make the most of it. Let's do this. I'm with the police. Turn around, please. What? Me? Yes, you. Hands behind your back. Let's go. Wait, stop. I have something you need to see. What did you say? I know mm. you think I killed my so father. Bad. But please, if you... Enough. You're under arrest. Will you just... You have to listen to me. No, I do not. Only people I have to listen to are my daughter and my mother, and my mother's dead. Now oh, shut up. That's mm. enough. Hold still. Help Don't me. Move. Will you come help me? Oh, right. Forgot to give her the photograph. Yeah, you still have to do that. And call Bumblebee. You have to do that, too. See how the hitman is an inconvenience at this point? Sir? 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 Sir, 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 sir. Anyway, if you grab the watch, then the game will teleport you to the past again. Your father will tell you that you can't marry your sister, and you can agree with him, which ends the game. Fine. You're gonna force my hand. You want my answer? Yes, I do. I, uh... <sighs> yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, I guess... I guess there is a world where I leave, and where she doesn't get to know why. There is, and I know, I know it's hard. Thank you for understanding why it needs to be this way. Yeah, what a climax. This game's a fucking mess. If you click continue after the credits roll, then you'll find yourself in the same apartment, but empty since you went back and retroactively undid your marriage. I uh, guess the landlord didn't feel like installing any appliances in this timeline. The only thing you can do now is grab the watch, which is magically still in the vent. You'll go back to the father scene again, and if you thought the first ending we got was bad... Ooh boy! <laughs> to get the, uh, canon ending, you have to repeatedly bother your wife about the book she's reading until she tells you a quote from it. It is only by forgetting that we ever really drop the thread of time and approach the experience of living in the present moment. Babe. Yeah, you're right, not my thing. Then, while in the stopwatch flashback with your father, you use the quote from the book. Say hey, it's only something. by forgetting that we ever really dropped the thread of time and approach the experience of living in the present moment. <sighs> you read that one, eh? Your father, in response to this quote, offers to hypnotize you so that you can forget your relationship with your wife. Yeah, you heard that right. 
If you just sit there and wait for your father to finish the monologue, that's exactly what he does. Hypnotizes you. Not only does the game end, this is the only ending that completely resets the game. If you click continue, it's just like a fresh install. You do have a remarkable imagination, the stories you've created. But believing them so strongly, so deeply is unhealthy. You have to let her go. You can't keep obsessing over her. Sometimes things just are what they are. It's time for you to wake up. Turns out that these weren't flashbacks at all. The truth of the game is that it actually took place during this scene with your father. The part where you're living a happy life in your small apartment was a mere figment of your imagination that you're daydreaming during this conversation with your dad. This is the canon ending. So, uh, let me explain why this doesn't work. First, forget the game's real explanation that I just told you. Imagine the story we were given up until this point. You, a young man making his way in the world, were pulled aside by your father and told that the woman you love and were planning to marry was in fact your half-sister. He told you that you couldn't be married to her. You're reeling from the shock, so you argue. It's almost out of instinct. It turned violent, and by horrible accident, you ended up murdering your own father. You can't cope. You don't know how to. So your brain blocks the event, lets you carry on like it never happened. You live a happy life with a woman you love for years. Until one day, by some cosmic justice, you are brought to heal and forced to relive the events of your past. The only way out is to forgive yourself, admit responsibility, turn yourself in. What's at stake? This isn't just your life, but your wife's and your unborn child's. They deserve a better life. And you can't live the lie for the coming decades. It's all come to a point now. And it's time to act, to do one good deed. The one good deed that could begin to atone for what wretchedness you brought on the world. Or it was a dream, it was all a dream, a fantasy that you were having instead of paying attention during a conversation with your father. There is no wife, there is no unborn child, it's just you, your dad, and the culmination of an absolute mountain of mistakes. All of which can be avoided by simply going through a particularly painful breakup and a few rounds of therapy. Or, you know, hypnotism. Whatever. Look, this has been a lot. So, what's the takeaway from all of this? Well, what I'm hoping you get out of this is... Uh, go play Sexy Brutal. It's really good, really fun, and listen to the soundtrack. It just fucking goes! <laughs> <laughs>